particular solutions. In the previous video, we talked about general solutions to differential equations. The particular solution to the differential equation is the solution to the differential equation where C is known. We find the C using an initial condition. What is an initial condition? That is a point on the solution used to help find C, often given as an ordered pair like XY, but values. Let's look at example number one and we'll walk through the steps to find the particular solution. Number one, find the particular solution Y passing through the point 2 comma 4 for the differential equation y prime equals 3x squared minus 1. So when it says particular solution, think to yourself, I need to find c. And when it says y, I need it of the form y equals. So let's take our y prime first and write it as dy dx equals 3x squared minus 1. Rewriting it in differential form by multiplying by dx, dy equals 3x squared minus 1 times dx, and then taking the antiderivative to make the derivative go away, we get y equals, using our power rule for 3x squared, we have x cubed, because x cubed taking the derivative is 3 multiplied to x squared, minus the antiderivative of 1 is x, and then plus c. This is a general solution. Because of the plus c, c is an infinite number, gives us an infinite number of possible solutions. But we want a particular solution, so we need to find that c. How do we do that? Well, we just found the antiderivative, the general solution. Now we need to look for the initial condition, that given point, and plug it in. So we take our general solution. Here's the initial condition. This is the x and this is the y. Plug in the y, 4 equals, and plug in the x. 2 cubed minus 2 plus c and solve for c. c is negative 2 in this case. Now that we have what c is, we can rewrite the solution using the known value of c and that will be our particular solution. So taking our general solution, y equals x cubed minus x c is negative 2, so minus 2, and this is the particular solution because we know what c is. Number 2, solve the differential equation. Notice this is a second derivative, h double prime of t equals sine t. So when it says solve the differential equation, that means get no derivative. If we have a second derivative, that means we need to work the antiderivative twice. So from the second derivative to get to h prime, of t, the first derivative, we take the antiderivative of this second derivative one time with respect to t. h prime of t, the antiderivative of sine of t, is negative cosine of t plus c. Check. The derivative of cosine of t is negative sine of t, so two negatives will make positive sine of t. Now, we have two initial conditions. Here's the first initial condition that we'll use because we have a h prime, and this involves h prime. This number that got plugged in is the x, and what it equals is the y. So in place of h prime of t, we'll put 1. In place of t, we'll put 0. So 1 equals negative cosine of 0 plus c. 
since cosine of 0 is 1, c equals 2. So h prime of t equals negative cosine of t plus 2. Remember, we're trying to solve the differential equation, meaning we're trying to get there to be no derivative. So we still have a derivative. We have to do this process again. So to get to h of t, I'm going to take the antiderivative of that first derivative, negative cosine of t plus 2 dt. So h of t equals negative sine of t plus 2t plus c, another constant of integration. Now, because it's the same problem and it's not the same constant of integration, I should technically go back and call this is my first constant of integration, c sub 1. Therefore, c sub 1 equals 2. I'm integrating again, so this is my second constant of integration. Now we have an initial condition that we're going to use involving h of t. This is the x and this is the y. So in place of h of t, I'm going to put 6, and in place of t, I'm going to put 0. So 6 equals negative sine of 0 plus 2 times 0 plus c sub 2, my second constant of integration, which ends up equaling 6. So now I can rewrite my original function. h of t equals, go back up here, negative sine of t plus 2t plus 6. I've solved it because I have no more derivatives. Number three, notice from an AP exam. The acceleration of a particle moving along the x-axis at time t is given by a of t equals 6t minus 2. If the velocity is 25 when t equals 3 and the position is 10 when t equals 1, then the position x of t equals what? Let's start by recalling when we deal with position, velocity, and acceleration, this is the order in which we go to take the derivatives. So from position to get to velocity, we take the first derivative. To get to acceleration, we take the second derivative. Now I like to say p for position because it helps me to think of position, but they're using x of t. So if you'd prefer, call that p of t since we're more familiar with that. So notice that we're starting with a of t, which we can call p double prime of t because that's the second derivative to get to acceleration. So how do I start with p double prime equaling 6t minus 2 and get just a p of t? I have to go through two antiderivatives. So let's go one at a time. p prime from p double prime means I'm taking the antiderivative of 6t minus 2 with respect to t. So p prime equals, using my power rule, this makes 3t squared minus 2t plus c, a constant of integration. How do I find out what this c is? Well, remember that p prime is the same as v, the velocity. Well, they told me the velocity is 25 when t equals 3. So the v is 25 at the time when t is 3. So I can take out the v and put 25 in its place, and in place of the t, put 3. And solve for that constant of integration, c is 4. So my velocity equation, or p prime, is 3t squared minus 2t plus 4. But I have to get to the position function. So how do I go from p prime to p? That's right, another antiderivative. So p will equal the antiderivative of p prime 3t squared minus 2t plus 4 with respect to t. So p 
using my power rule is t cubed minus t squared plus 4t plus a constant of integration. Notice it's a different constant of integration. So let's go back and call this c sub 1. And now this will be our second constant of integration, c sub 2. Let's solve for that by using our other initial condition. The position is 10 when t is 1. So 10 for position and 1 for the time. That makes c sub 2 equal to 6. And now we can rewrite our position function. p equals t cubed minus t squared plus 4t plus 6. And now we have our position function. Number four, again, from the AP exam, but multiple choice. If the second derivative of f is given by f double prime equals 2x minus cosine x, which of the following could be f of x? A couple ways we could do this. Since we're given choices, we could take each function's derivative twice and see which one gives us this second derivative, or we could work backwards. f prime will be the antiderivative of this second derivative function with respect to x, which makes f prime equal to x squared minus sine x plus c. Power rule, and because the derivative of sine x is cosine x, there's that antiderivative, and always plus a constant of integration. f will be the antiderivative of that first derivative function with respect to x, which means f is, using the power rule, x cubed over 3 plus cosine x plus a constant times x plus a second constant. Call it c sub 2, and we can go back and call this c sub 1, since now we know we're dealing with two constants of integration. So which of these answers best represents what this looks like? Well, I see x cubed over 3 in two of these, but I don't see it here, I don't see it here, and I don't see it here, so I know those are out. Now I see plus cosine x, and only this one has plus cosine x, so I know it must be choice b. Constant times x, well, here's a constant times x, plus a second constant, here's a second constant. And there we go, just to verify that b is the correct answer, and not this one. Thanks for watching. See you in class.